Hey, so as per usual, you have a complex scene and you're sh uh, there's no structure to it. Uh, when you have something very complex like this with lots of depth of field, with lots of uh, elements to it, right? There's there's rivers, there's trees, there's mountains, there's foreground characters, there's midground characters, there's midground back. You have to find a way to manage all of this information. And what you want to do is convey specific parts. You want to curate the image. You want to design the image so that uh, you're you're filtering a lot of that out, simplifying a lot of it uh, to, to say the least. And so what's really going on here is that we want to approach a scene like this through color, light, and atmosphere. And we can use those tools to filter it. So I think if you have better planning, you know, in that regard from the beginning, then uh, what you show, can you can save yourself some time. So if we look, uh, you know, at the small version up here, and this is a great way to tell your structure. If you desaturate this, and then we're going to just simplify that even just a little bit doing the median filter. See, it just, it, it basically stripped it out a lot of the smaller details. So we could focus on, there is some structure in there, but we're going to have to fight for it. Um, we want basically, I think this is to be the plan, right, is to have this whole midsection here. This has a shape. See, what I'm doing here is I'm selecting this as like an abstract shape. This, in a way, as an abstract shape as well. And we could you know, remove a little bit of that. But this is essentially as uh, you know, a shape in itself. Uh, we need to, to uh, make a bit louder, make a little bit more clear. Um, and that's going to be light. And we'll have that light, that light. This is going to be dark or gray. And this will be dark or gray. So like a little bit of structural simplification is really what this just needs. So if we go to levels, for example, we blow that, that light out, see like this, see that's where the light is hitting in the scene. And now it, it separates the, um, a great deal of that information. Adding a little bit more you know, atmospheric perspective and such into this as well, See, like, there's no separation here between what is in the far, far background, between what's and vice versa. So what, what you can often do is just, we can make this the gray, right? It's going to go light, and then gray, and then dark, and then light again. So this would be a, a situation where I want to take all of this information in here and simplify that as well. So I'm going to go to Levels. That was curves. I like levels. All right, we're going to simplify this out. See, kind of like that. That removes contrast in the back. When we have contrast on things, we're essentially pushing it forward. And you notice how small this is on my screen. This is how you want to be planning and thinking about this when it is this tiny. That way, it'll tell you if it's going to read, you know, as a thumbnail and as a design, first and foremost. So, see something like that. Now, we could sandwich in and play up this rhythm of light, dark, and light, I think if you add you know, some of that nice foreground, some of that direct light you know, to it, and then that way you can add some of this light to the front of the design you know, up in here, maybe like a little bit of light in there, like on the, on the beginning stages of this character, and then have it essentially be a little bit, uh, a little bit darker, like right here as it transitions you know, into the background. So see light, a little bit of light. I always play this up at this stage. Light to see here, light to see, because like, you have a lot going on there, I can't see at all what it is. So if we come in here like that and show some of the information, it'll really help it out. Now we can further, you know, reinforce a lot of this shape design too, if we take everything, you know, that's in the back here. See, I have like, okay, so these are like flags and banners. So if we take like all this information that's beyond the foreground and we remove more contrast from that away and we still kind of play up it being lighter, like we can add to that, that separation. Now I go a little bit too far right there, but that's something. 
you know, that you can get back. Like, I'd probably have this building here. I'd probably have that all be in the shadow. You know, something kind of like this. Oh. And just keeping that simple. So it, let's say you do a drawing like this. What I often do, if it's something that complex, uh, what I do is make a layer over that. I put it on multiply. I drop the whole layer, like the whole scene is in um, shadow. And what you can do from, you know, grab a sharp kind of uh, painterly brush and specifically graph out, you know, what is in light and what is in shadow. And this is called the graphic composition. And it works really well because it will tell you in a way how things are working out. So see, like that could be light. It's basically you, you, you're you asking yourself the question, what is in light and what is in shadow? And it's not complicating it, you know, any more beyond that. So see, like I have that be in shadow there, that be in light. Um, whoop, shadow, shadow. It's a very nice approach to figure out you know, the complexities of things. So see, like, I can't even see what exactly is going on there, but if these are all characters back there, we could put this, see that, because that's all shadow. The shadows are all going to be grouped. So in a way, kind of something like that. Then you have your foreground characters. Then, to, you know, to, to, to complete this, I'd actually have a lot of this being shadow over there, too. You know, we kind of have that, this all be fill light, maybe a little bit of a a little bit of light there maybe right a little bit of light kind of over there so see it makes a nice pattern and rhythm and that's sort of the way you're you know we're, we're kind of approaching these from from that abstract sort of you know, point of view and of course you can add in basically this is all going to be like light and stuff in the background I mean like that so we can see a little bit of light there. We can see a little bit of light there. See, we can actually keep all these guys in the shadow, like barely show a little bit of light, you know, just kind of creeping in on them. Yeah, I think that'll work, you know, ideally the best. And then see that that guy's all going to be in shadow too. So you just see like little bits of light right there and perhaps, right, a little bit of light on these guys, you know, there. So if we shut off your original drawing, Right, and we turn this on normal. So you can, and then you clean this up a little bit. It gives you such a nice graphical sense of what your structure is going to be. And then you can play that out. So see, like I know you have some kind of complex creatures, right, and everything there. So I, I, I mean, it's hard for me to say, you know, what they are. But, right, this becomes patterns and rhythms. And this would be like a great first step to take, to break down and to organize your information. Of course, you can always play things like this up. Like we can have like light, you know, kind of bouncing and coming over there. We can take, you know, we could take your, st your structure. Like if this is um, your foreground characters, right? Like this and, you know, I don't know. You have so much going on in here. You, you're, you're putting me through the paces today. We'll just take it all like that, just, just for now. So see, we could simplify all that now by making it a bit lighter like so. And you see this, this now kind of groups it. We're starting to subdivide the information just a bit. It's not changing, but it's adding a little bit of atmospheric perspective. And you can, you can begin to see a little bit more how things are, are reading out. Um, you know, so that's basically kind of what you want to do with this. It's not that the idea is bad. It's not even that the design is bad. I it think the problem, since this is becoming a bit of a consistent thing with you, is stemming from your painting process. And some of that, of course, may have to do with your experience, you know, of color and light. 
because it it's essentially not you got to paint with 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 color and light rather than um, just trying to represent everything in a in a truly realistic way. See, I'm not sure what's I'm not sure what's happening there, but you know if I want to bring right this information up just like I did before. with that light, which I could, you know, it's like kind of like a warm yellowy, like gray back there. Just, just trying to push, push that light back there just a, quite a bit more. See, it's gonna help these shapes in the foreground really start to pop. And of course, then you can go grab these nice greens and work on simplifying that. So see here's like a color or uh, a shape of you know, grass here. You could add whether it's sand or grass, whatever, right, whatever this may be. You know, add that, you know, basically transitioning to add that in. See, in a way, I'm trying to play up this light, this warm sunlight coming in in the foreground, and that's illuminating, you know, some of these characters and everything. That that guy's got like a, a warm, right, sort of red robe. My thing is sticking. It's, it's gonna get. You're gonna feel that light on it like this, and of course, if these guys are in the shadow. Wherever there's like a top facing form like this, you're gonna have a, a slightly cooler version of that. So right, we'll kind of take that, kind of cool that off just a bit, right? And you're gonna have colors like this, maybe even you know a little bit deeper, depending on how you want to play those up. So as, essentially, everything is is just lacking dimension, and, and that can be a huge, huge you know deal, you know down the road for things. So right, if you see if you have this character here, I know it's, it's a bit of a mount, right? It's it's kind of like an ox shape. Of course we're not I don't think you see any of the side. I'm just gonna exaggerate, you know, the heck out of this for now. But see like right we want to see that and feel that light kind of hitting him. And then all this detail. See this is all in the shadow. And anywhere where you have shadow, that's where You've got to keep things simple and play up the color. So see, like I'm just going to remove some of that contrast, simplify the information, so the edges are softer and have the the hard edges, you know, be in the light, you know, where the information is. Now, for things in the in the real real far background, I would just this is where you want to exaggerate atmospheric perspective. So it's almost like, see if I take, this is a very, very quick band-aid sort of way of doing this, but if we take some of this nice blue and this is some sky, some shadow, some shadow color, right? We come filling, filling that in. And you go lighter color, for example. See, like that would be like how some of that light is coming to fill in the scene. But it makes it, see how it makes it so much more digestible, you know, for that viewer? Yeah, so generally, if your drawing, you know, looks all right, uh, the drafting's fine, uh, the design itself looks pretty cool, and you're you're jumping in you know, paint to render to color it uh, and things aren't looking right after about like an hour there is a very strong indication that there's a problem with uh, your process or that there's uh, a lack of understanding of, of the color and the light and the atmosphere and it and it really can have to do with like your approach to that so see if I just make a new layer here and I'm starting over painting from background 
to foreground, basically painting with color and light itself. What you want to do is separate, like I did in the diagrams there, uh, is separate things by uh, shapes and start with the big shapes working way down to the smaller shapes. And uh, again, like I mentioned, primarily the problem could be with, with the process, but part of that process where the problem can lie is in the planning. And that's again what I tried to establish on those first two uh, you know, layovers on the left is like with a little bit of planning, you can go a long way, but it really helps you look at things abstractly. It, it helps you look at things on a, on a more kind of global scale rather than jumping into all the, the needless and pointless uh, detail that can cover up a scene and that can make a lot of noise. So I, one strategy I use is to start very uh, a little bit soft, you know, glazing in the atmosphere, and then I, I use the lasso tool, and I, I just whittle in kind of like sharper shapes toward the more important things, and where there's a lot of distance, and where there's a lot of overlap, I, I just let things kind of fall back. Uh, it's just good to have that sort of hierarchy of, you know, what's reading and what's not reading, as in the case here. Uh, and this is just one way of working. It, it, if I'm painting a scene from scratch, you know, by hand, laboriously, like this, I, this is kind of how what what has always worked for me in terms of painting with color and light, painting with atmosphere. Uh, it works better than needlessly detailing because I I can know going this method after an hour of blocking in major shapes and colors with all the local colors and the values. It's a good indication, you know, if things aren't reading, then you know, there's certainly a problem and I, it needs to be fixed before I paint a window, before I add maybe a photo texture, uh, before I clean anything up. And so uh, yeah, being able to troubleshoot, you know, your stuff and, and looking at it objectively and very small. See, I'm keeping this, this is about less than a fourth of my total screen real estate. Like I'm keeping it small so I can get that wider perspective you know, looking at it and seeing and drastically assessing the readability of it. And then really it's just a matter of using smaller brushes, making cleaner details, and it's, but it's still getting shapes and forms to read for a large part of this uh, early, these uh, earlier stages, blocking out the values, implying some. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a fairly organic way to work. It, it's kind of how I painted traditionally many, many years ago. And it, and it does translate well into the uh, digital realm. And so I know I went a little bit brighter and a little bit more colorful. That That's kind of my, my own stylistic choices. If you're going for something more somber, but still daylight, a little more re realistic, you can just go to sap the saturation out of that and use lighting in a much more kind of subtle way. I always like to... You guys know my work. It, I'd be a little more aggressive with it. And see, kind of, I just tweak that, calm those colors down a little bit at the end, depending again what you're what you're going for. And so, lastly, like the other thing I recommend as part of the whole uh, process is, if particularly if you're going for something more realistic, it's a lot easier and a lot quicker to build you know a model based off the uh, the original you know drawing so here's the drawing and then you know here's a very quick model I did I did about 30 30 minutes maybe a little less whipping this up with a, a kit bash a kit I had uh, and you know, there's no color there's not even any texture on this particular one uh, just for the sake of speed, but it what this gives me is light, it gives me shadow, it gives me perspective, it gives me form. Uh, in terms of process, it solves a lot of problems. So let's say if I were to continue with this illustration, all by hand, all very painterly, something like this could serve as a very valuable reference, you know, moving forward, getting accurate detail. Uh, figuring out what's simple, what's not simple, and it, can, of course, can help with scale. Now, if you were going to something more realistic,
this is a real big time saver because basically you you could either texture this up a bit in the 3D or you could drop photo elements over this. You could colorize it. You could give it a, quite a bit more realism. Uh, you can then start dropping photo elements in all the shapes. You know, drop in a sky, drop in a couple ground planes. This could get done in like four or five hours uh, if you're you're persistent enough, and it can look as realistic as you want as quickly. You know, as you can manage. Um, but this, of course, is a very valuable tool because you could switch the lighting up. I was playing with lighting and shadow. See, like knocking the back buildings into shadow puts that emphasis on the arch. And then this is all in shadow because it's right. It's it's dark light, dark light. It's, it's a pattern and it's a rhythm. And he, I didn't bother m m putting in a couple characters here, but that wouldn't have taken any long. I you just do that in Daz or something, and that would give you all the pieces you need uh, so there's like a you know, managing your workflow finding out you know what is efficient for you what it, it becomes really this is all about problem solving for me and like working things through and finding a solution that works best uh, so hopefully uh, this will help you out and you know everyone else that watches you guys enjoy it and do take care